In section 11.2, we talk about confidence intervals for variance and standard deviation. If we're looking for the confidence interval of variance, variance will be in the middle. What we'll have to do is we will take n minus 1, the degrees of freedom, times the sample uh, standard deviation. We'll square that and then divide it by, now notice this, critical value, the right-hand critical value for the chi-squared distribution, we will get this on the table, uh, from the table. And then on the far end, then notice that we will divide by the left-hand critical value from the chi-squared table. Then it, if we're looking for the confidence interval for the standard deviation, the standard deviation is just the square root of variance. So we take the square root of this inequality, and this is how we will determine the confidence interval for the standard deviation. So let's look at an example. Okay. Pennies are minted with a standard deviation of 0 0.0165 grams. New equipment was purchased to improve the quality by reducing variation in penny weights. We take a simple random sample of 10 pennies, okay, so this means n in our case will be equal to 10, and from there we can determine the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are n minus 1, which in this case is 9. So a simple random sample of 10 pennies is obtained from the um, uh, pennies manufactured with the new equipment. Okay, so we're looking at the new equipment. And we look and see that a histogram shows that the weights of penny, pennies is normally distributed. Okay, so at this point, we have met the requirements for using the chi-squared distribution. It is normally distributed, and we chose from a simple random sample. So we can use the chi-squared distribution. Then we proceed, and we see that the sample of 10 pennies has a standard deviation of, uh, so this is S. 0 0.0125 grams, and we are looking to construct the 95% confidence interval estimate of the standard deviation of the weights of the pennies that were made with the new equipment. Okay, so let's start by finding our critical values. We know we're looking for the 95% confidence. The chi-squared distribution starts at zero. It is not symmetric and looks like so. So we want to be 95% confident. So inside of here will be 95%. And then that will mean then that over here, we have 5% remaining. So we will split that between the two endpoints. This will be 0 0.025 and over here as well, this will be 0 0.025. Then we can find these critical values. This will be the left-hand critical value. This will be the right-hand critical value. We will obtain these from the table. Remember, when looking at the table, you need to find the area to the right. So we will look up on the table chi-squared for 0 0.025 for the right-hand. And over here, we'll be looking up the chi-squared for 0.975. The other thing that we'll need to know, remember, is that the degrees of freedom are 9. So when you look these up on the table, what you should get on the left-hand side is 2.700, and on the right-hand side, 19.023. Okay, and with that, we are ready now to do our calculations. All right, so we know that the confidence interval should go in between the square root of n minus 1 s squared divided by the right hand uh, critical value that'll be less than the standard deviation for the population and the square root of n minus 1 s squared divided by the left hand critical value for the chi-squared distribution. So if we plug this in we'll get the square root of 9 times point zero one two five that's from here this is oops this is s so we put that in there don't forget to square it and then divide by our right hand critical value which we get from over here which is 19.023 that should be less than or equal to sigma 
and taking the square root and just copying 9 uh, times s squared, 0.0125 squared, divided by the left-hand critical value, which is 2.700. And then we can just put this in our calculators, and we will see then on the left we get 0 0.0086, should be less than the true population. Um, standard deviation, which will be less than 0 0.0 or 0 0.0228, and these are in grams. So, what does this mean? All right. So this is our confidence interval. The interpretation is that we are 95% confident. 95% uh, confident. that the true um, that the true value of sigma that is the standard deviation for the um, weights of pennies that are made with the new equipment we are 95 percent confident that that true value lies between 0 0.0086 and 0 0.0228. Okay, so then we can answer this question. Does the new equipment seem to be effective in reducing the variation in weights of pennies? Well, there's a few things we should note. Note that uh, both the sample standard deviation, which was 0 0.0125, and sigma for the old equipment, we were given that in the problem as 0 0.0165. These are included in the interval. We should also note that S is less than the old standard, uh, the standard deviation using the old equipment. But it does not appear that the new equipment significantly reduces the variation. does not appear that the new equipment uh, significantly, that's the important part here, significantly uh, reduces the variation.